Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this algebraic equation. Now, make sure to stick at the end of the video where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. All right, so I have x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So now, from x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2, I'm actually going to factor out x to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 2 times. Well, x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 2 is simply just x plus x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 2 is 1. So I have x to the power of 2 times x plus 1 plus simply all I'm left with is x plus 1. So this is equal to 0. Now, if I factor out x plus 1 from this, I get x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So, from here, I get two equations. I have x plus 1 is equal to 0, and I have x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So, for x plus 1 equals 0, simply subtract 1 on both sides. These two cancel out. Now, I'm left with x is equal to negative 1. So this is one solution of x. Now, for x squared plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to first start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So now these two ones cancel out, and now I have x squared is equal to negative 1. Well, now I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of x squared, that's simply equal to x. So if x equals the square root of negative 1, well, it's actually pos positive or negative square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is actually equal to i, the imaginary number i. So now, if I replace the square root of negative 1 with i, I get x is equal to positive or negative i. So my three solutions to this problem are negative 1, i, and negative i. Sorry, negative i. So these are my solutions. All right, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of 1,000 minus 5 to the power of 998. So, to solve this, I'm going to first substitute in 1,000, or sorry, I'm going to first change 1,000 to 998 plus 2, because 1,000 equals 998 plus 2. So, I have 5 to the power of 998 plus 2 minus 5 to the power of 998. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, 5 to the power of 998 plus 2, this is going to equal 5 to the power of 998 times 5 to the power of 2. And I have this minus 5 to the power of 998. So now, I'm going to factor out 5 to the power of 998. So now I have 5 to the power of 998 times 5 to the power of 2 minus 1. And 5 to the power of 2, that's simply equal to 25. So I have 5 to the power of 998 times 25 minus 1. And 25 minus 1 is 24. So I'm left with 5 to the power of 998 times 24, which can also be written as 
598 times 24. So this is my answer. Now I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So again, I first start with 5 to the power of 1000 minus 5 to the power of 998. Now in this, this time, instead of changing 1000, I'm going to change 998 to 5 to the power of 1000 minus 2. And now this is the same thing as 5 to the power of 1000 plus negative 2. Now remember, if I have something to form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, 5 to the power of 1000 plus negative 2, that's going to equal 5 to the power of 1000 times 5 to the power of negative 2. Now from here, I can go ahead and factor out 5 to the power of 1000. So I have 5 to the power of 1,000 times 1 minus 5 to the power of negative 2. Now, this is the same thing as 5 to the power of 1,000 times 1 minus 1 over 25. And 1 minus 1 over 25, that's going to equal 24 over 25. So I have 5 to the power of 1,000 times 24 over 25. So this is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. Now, I'm going to subtract x to the power of 5 on both sides. So. Now these two are going to cancel out. Now we'll be left with x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 5 is equal to 0. Now x to the power of 5, I can rewrite as x to the power of 3 plus 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, x to the power of 3 plus 2, that's going to equal x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. This is equal to 0. So now, from here, notice how both of these terms have x to the power of 3 in them. So if I factor out x to the power of 3, I get x to the power of 3 times 1 minus x squared. And this is equal to 0. So now from here, this gives me two equations. I have x to the power of 3 is equal to 0, and I have 1 minus x squared is equal to 0. So for x to the power of 3 equals 0, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So the cube root of x to the power of 3, that's simply x, and the cube root of 0 is simply 0. So x equals 0 is one solution to this problem. Now, for 1 minus x squared equals 0, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and now I have 1 is equal to x squared. So now I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So I have one, the square root of 1 is equal to square root of x squared. So the square root of 1, or sorry, the square root of x squared, that's simply equal to x. And the square root of 1 is equal to the positive or negative 1. So these are two more solutions to this problem. So now to check, I have x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. So first off, let's check 0. If x equals 0, I have 0 to the power of 3 is equal to 0 to the power of 5. 0 to the power of 3 is 0, 0 to the power of 5 is 0, so this is right. So now if x equals 1, I have 1 to the power of 3 is equal to 1 to the power of 5. 1 to the power of 3 is 1, 1 to the power of 5 is 1, so this is right. And finally, if it's negative 1, I have negative 1 to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 5. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1, negative 1 to the power of 5 is negative 1, so this is right as well. So all three of my solutions are right.